Welcome to the great promise of closer U.S. Somaliland ties, an address by His Excellency Musa Bihi Abdi. Please welcome the President of the Heritage Foundation, Dr. Kevin Roberts. Good morning. Those of you tuning in online, it may not be morning where you are, hello. Welcome from Washington, D.C. Your Excellency, welcome. And to all of you here in person, what a great day for this country, for the Heritage Foundation, and for the wonderful Republic of Somaliland. Before we begin, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the people of Ukraine, who, as we speak, are battling for freedom, and for many of them, their very lives. May we pray that that conflict ends soon with Ukraine whole and free. Our hearts and prayers are with them. I also mention Ukraine because it's relevant to our discussion today. In case anyone has missed the last 4,000 years of history, or just the last couple of weeks, I want you to know that the world is indeed a dangerous place. For as much as we are blessed to have peaceful neighbors and oceans to our east and west here in the United States, we can't ever be complacent about our security. That's one of the reasons why it's so important for the U.S. to develop strategic and amicable partnerships, especially with those like our esteemed Somalilander guests here today. Since I'm an educator at heart, I must first walk us through some relevant history. But as I promised my new friend, His Excellency, President Abdi, I'll be brief. Somaliland's independence is not currently acknowledged by any country in the world, including the United States. This wasn't always the case, though. Somaliland was briefly independent in 1960 before joining the rest of Somalia. That union was ultimately rejected by the Somaliland people, but not before it was too late. The world had decided that Somaliland was indistinguishable from Somalia, no matter how Somalilanders felt. In the 1980s, rebellions against the brutal dictator in power broke out against Somalia, including in Somaliland. Somalia's armed forces devastated Somaliland during the fighting, practically flattening its capital city. It may, in fact, have been the only conflict in history that featured aircraft taking off from a runway in the same city they then attacked with bombs. That was just one of the cruelties of that war. In 1991, the dictatorship collapsed, but the fighting continued throughout Somalia, dragging it into failed state status for two decades. We're probably all familiar with the Battle of Mogadishu, better known in the U.S. as the Black Hawk Down incident. Those awful events took place in 1993 during the period I'm describing. We might also be aware that an Al-Qaeda affiliate, Al-Shabaab, began conquering swaths of southern Somalia in the 2000s. This group, which is still powerful, had links to some of the men who perpetrated the 1998 bombings of the U.S. embassies in Kenya and Tanzania. I'm recounting all this because it highlights how remarkable Somaliland's experience has been. It was and is the exception to Somalia's turmoil. After 1991, it redeclared independence and created a functioning state with its own army, passport, currency, foreign policy, and very importantly, free elections. Foreigners can walk around Hargeisa without security, and ISIS and Al-Qaeda have virtually no presence there. It's hard not to admire building a viable state amid such difficult circumstances. How Somalilanders have achieved all this is equally commendable. They had a powerful claim for international sympathy after the devastation they suffered during the war, but they didn't wait for help from anyone else. If they had, they'd still be waiting today. No, they went instead about the business of building their country largely on their own. The clans that had been on opposite sides of the fighting reconciled and in the process created one of the few examples of a successful indigenous peace process. They committed to building something that was peaceful, democratic, and workable. This brings me back to why I think the U.S. and Somaliland should be strong partners. First, this territory of its own accord has stuck with the democratic system and process for three decades. It hasn't been perfect, just like no democratic system is perfect. 
But the old saying is that character is how you behave when no one is watching. Well, Somaliland has stayed faithful to democracy when hardly anyone was noticing. This is proof of genuine belief. Second, let's envision where Somaliland sits. The Bab El Mandeb Strait, a shipping choke point that carries much of the trade between Europe and Asia, is about 70 miles away. Yemen, where American allies are fighting Iranian-backed militias in Al-Qaeda, is just across the Gulf of Aden. Somaliland shares a border with Ethiopia, Africa's second most populous country, and in normal times, a landlocked economic dynamo. Somaliland's recently renovated Berber report has great potential for boosting the economy of Ethiopia and its neighbors in East Africa. Right next door to Somaliland is Djibouti, which hosts a number of foreign military bases, including China's most prominent military footprint on the continent. To the west, and also in a commanding position on the Bab El Mandeb, is Eritrea. In January, Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi visited Eritrea and announced a strategic partnership with that country. We need to be clear-eyed about the competition we're in with the Chinese Communist Party. The Chinese Communist Party is America's single most formidable opponent and is devoted to advocating for autocracies like itself and Russia by violating the peace and prosperity of nations that refuse to kowtow to it. America must meet this challenge with resolve. That would include a close relationship with Somaliland, given its strategic position, its pro-American orientation, and that almost alone in Africa, it's been immune to Beijing's overtures and threats. In fact, Somaliland has established ties with our Taiwanese friends, another unrecognized democracy that the United States should support. Those of you familiar with East Africa know it is a tough neighborhood. Sudan's hopeful democratic transition has been sabotaged by a coup, one of the leaders of which, by the way, was recently in Russia to strengthen ties with Putin's criminal regime. Ethiopia is caught in a terrible civil war that we also pray will end soon. Eritrea is an international pariah and one of five countries that just voted against a UN resolution condemning Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Southern Somalia is paralyzed by political battles and Al-Shabaab is still strong. Amid all this volatility, Somaliland has enjoyed relative calm, providing evidence that there is, in fact, fertile ground for a truly sustainable partnership. Finally, I believe, and call me crazy, that American policy is most effective when it is tethered to reality. We will see few gains in East Africa if our policy there does not account for the on-the-ground truth that Somaliland has been functionally independent for decades. Count on the Heritage Foundation for always trumpeting that fact. So let's upgrade our policy. The United States of America should strengthen its position in a precarious and important part of the world. It should do the justice of honoring the consistent aspirations of millions of Somalilanders to rule themselves. And America should proudly be the first state to recognize Somaliland as an independent nation. We look forward to that day. In the meantime, it is my honor to introduce His Excellency, the President of Somaliland, Musa Bihi Abdi. Sir. I would like to extend my sincere gratitude and appreciation to Dr. Kevin Robert, President of the Heritage Foundation, for inviting me to give the address today. The Heritage Foundation stands out among the America's leading public policy institutions to promoting a truly interdisciplinary approach to understanding the politics of the 
and economics of East Africa. It is therefore a great pleasure and honor for me to exchange views today on Somaliland and the future of our region with such a distinguished participants. Ladies and gentlemen, today the whole world is a laser focusing on the tragedy in Ukraine. The shelling, the bombardment, the destruction, the death, the mass suffering, and the largest refugee crisis in Europe since the World War II. Today, the suffering of the people of Ukraine is unfolding in front of our eyes with the help of the 24-7 news cycle and the social media. For us, as Somalanders, the tragedy is reminiscent of the genocide committed against our people 33 years ago. A tragedy I myself witnessed firsthand on which over the 550,000 of our people were massacred in the hands of Somalia government at that time. And millions of our people became either refugees or were internally displaced. We feel the pain and the anguish that the people of Ukraine feel today because we went through the same experience. Only in our case, the genocide committed against our people was hidden from the world as at that time there were no 24 seven days news cycle and the social media. However, the better memory of what we went through is forever be memorialized in the minds and will never be forgotten by our people. Ladies and gentlemen, I come here before yesterday to tell and to talk about my country's progress, challenges, and the role our country plays in the security, stability, and economic development in our region and beyond. Somaliland, geopolitical significance and shared interest with the like-minded countries. First, the security situation in Somalia has deteriorated dramatically, proving a re-evaluation of the political consideration that embedded more direct engagement between the US and Somaliland. As you will recall, the United States re-established diplomatic ties with Somalia in 2013, guided by a vision of an empowered central government in Mogadishu that could be that could build domestic unity among the disparate clans, degrade and defeat extremism, and protect its people and the neighbors from the scourge of terrorism and instability. That vision was unlikely not realized. Today, even the most committed empowering the Mogadishu regime have lost faith in that project. Time and time again, Mogadishu's partners have expended financial resources diplomatic resources, and military resources with a little show to be with their effort. Regrettably, after nearly a decade of good intentions by Mogadishu partners and considerable U.S. and international assistance, the Somalia government lacks legitimacy and struggles to exercise it is authority beyond Villa Somalia. 
it remains the source of instability in our fragile region. Secondly, the major development in the Horn of Africa has become a region of high tenant strategic importance. In a difficult neighborhood, Somaliland's stability and reliability is increasingly recognized as an asset to the advancing the interest of countries with which we share the same values. In recent years, the stability of the Horn of Africa has been challenged by conflicts in the region, as well as the constantly evolving operations of terrorist groups. Instability and food, security, and food insecurity is further exacerbated by the drought, desertification, locust swarms, and climate change effects. Simultaneously, the Babel Mandem Street has emerged as a vital strategic link in maritime trade routes connecting the Atlantic Ocean and Mediterranean Sea to the Indian Ocean. Significantly, portion of the world's oil passes through Babel Mandem, as well as considerable trade between Europe and Asia. Its importance is reflected in the expansion of foreign military bases and build up of naval, naval forces in the Red Sea, as well as enhanced international cooperation to fight piracy and ensure maritime security. Great powers competition in Africa will continue for the foreseeable future in the environment, in this environment, the United States should make clear it is support for governments that embrace democratic governance and stability in the midst of threats, instability, and external pressures. Major developments, so Maryland emerges as a trade and shipping hub. The modernization of Papel Port, the opening of a new international airport, and construction of commercial corridors to inland neighbors and connecting the Horn of Africa to global trade routes, serving as a linch, linchpin for renewed economic development in East Africa. Last June, our government and DP well of the Emirates inaugurated a new container terminal at Berbera Airport, marking the completion of the first phase of a significant port expansion project. This was followed in October with DP, with DP well and Britain's development finance agency announcing plans to jointly invest a significant amount of money in logistics infrastructure in Africa, sharing with further modernization of Purple Port. These investments, combined with the ongoing challenge in neighboring countries, make Somaliland the most stable and reliable conduit between much of East Africa and the world's major shipping lines. Taken together, these three developments, the challenges the international community confronts in the Horn of Africa is increasingly strategic importance and Berbera's potential to create a new economic engine for the region means that Somaliland is poised to become a key player in global security and economy. Somaliland and Somalia, or Somaliland dialogue and Somalia. 
Somaliland Somalia dialogue started with the London Conference of 23 February in 2012. Article 6 of the London Conference stated that the conference recognized the need for international community to support any dialogue that Somaliland and TFG transitional federal government or its replacement may agree to establish to clarify their future relations. The key point here is to clarify the future relations between the two countries. Therefore, in order to clarify the future relations between the two countries, the core issue of the dispute, namely the status of Somaliland, would have been addressed and resolved. Despite nine rounds of talks between 2012 and 2022, the expected outcome of the talks resolving the one issue of the dispute, the status of Somaliland never materialized, as there were no political breakthrough. The limited uh, agreements made on the peripheral political breakthrough, the limited agreements made on the peripheral technical issues were never implemented as Somalia she neglected on all the agreements. During these 10 years, Somalia has demonstrated a complete lack of interest in meaningful dialogue. In fact, Somalia has used the dialogue to pursue policies aimed at weakening Somaliland's independence and its stability to develop, including weaponizing international aid and economic development. Given that there has been no progress over the last 10 years since the dialogue between Somaliland and Somalia started, Somaliland believes that the dialogue had failed to achieve its objective. The reasons for failure lies entirely with Somalia efforts to undermine the dialogue process as demonstrated by its harmful actions. Willful disregard to the agreements we have agreed. Given that dialogue is not an option for Somalia as demonstrated by its conduct, bad faith and continuous sabotage of the dialogue. Somaliland believes that it's unfair to Somaliland to be holden to be holden to dialogue process that has failed to achieve its objectives and has no hope of succeeding. It is that difficult to imagine that we that what that what has not been achieved in ten years can be achieved in one or two years. Somaliland believes that there is no future in the continuation of that dialogue with Somalia and is prepared to pursue all available avenues for this international recognition. Given above, Somalia believes that the international community has a moral obligation to support <coughs> Somaliland's pursuit of international recognition. The merits and promise of closer U.S. Somaliland collaboration. In fact, this chapter has already begun. From regional security to democracy promotion to economic development, the objectives and values sought by the United States align entirely with Somaliland's vision. Recent months have been have seen an increase in an engagement and collaboration, including productive visits by Somaliland Foreign Affairs to Washington and the recent visit to Hargeisa by a delegation of senior U.S. congressional staff.
a historic first for Somaliland. I am very heartened. <laughs> I am very heartened by these developments, by sustained direct dialogue and partnership is needed if we are to effectively address the growing challenges and truly advance our shared security, economic, and governance objectives in the region. An important foundational element of this partnership is the establishment of the parliament, U.S. diplomatic presence in Hargeza. to establish of a permanent U.S. diplomatic presence in Hargeisa. Several nations, including Ethiopia, United Kingdom, Denmark, Kenya, Taiwan, Turkey, and the United Arab Emirates have diplomatic offices in our capital, and the United States of America should join their tasks, their ranks. With this presence and regular visits by senior U.S. officials, we will be able to cooperate more closely in a number of key issues and key areas. Let me briefly highlight a few areas where Somaliland's capabilities and proven track record can be valuable resources for like-minded countries. As I, noted, as I noted earlier, Somaliland has successfully deterred threats to our homeland and piracy in our territorial waters. Our Coast Guard guards work with partners such as the United Kingdom to guarantee the safety and the security of maritime trade through the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden. We work with foreign partners and international NGOs to minimize illicit trafficking and smuggling networks. We have much to offer in terms of community-based security, successes, and closer collaboration with the United States on these efforts would advance shared interest and strengthen its needed presence in the region. Similarly, our recent modernized infrastructure, particularly the port of Berbera, is well positioned to support security operations, logistics, and humanitarian aid, as well as expanded commercial opportunities throughout the region. We appreciate U.S. government's interest in Berbera and hope discussions will continue to explore utilization and further development of what could be a vital gateway for trade, investment, and security cooperation between the two countries. <laughs> On governance issue, Somaliland's democratic government is the only, I will say again, it's the only one of, the, one of its kind in the region it serves as a beacon for our neighbors and others whose citizens seek opportunities to engage in democratic process. Over the last 30 years, we have built our democratic norms and institutions and ensured more three, more three peaceful transition of power. We are aware that there are still certain issues to be addressed to ensure that our electoral process is more perfect. We are working on ways and means with our laws of enhancing the role of women in, politi in our political process and increasing their participation as candidates in future elections. Somaliland has much to offer. Others seeking to build their own democratization process, from updating voter registration systems to to 
for ensuring the objectivity of national election authorities and for managing polling stations to facilitating the work of independent election monitors. We have 20 years of practical experience to share. We will welcome greater partnership with the United States government and civil society organizations to advance democratic norms in our region and elsewhere and to further improve our democratic institutions. In a troubled region that has experienced significant setbacks for democratic governance and continues to be to face serious uh, threats from terrorists and other violent extremist groups, the successes of Somalia are not small achievements. Our friends in the United States understand this and we are grateful for their continued <coughs> engagement and support. Yet, this is just the beginning. We can and must work more closely together if we hope, if we hope to compete with and overtake these who seek further instability and dependency on our region. There are so many pro uh, practical and important steps we can take and with each one, Somaliland will demonstrate to our partners and the world that our ultimate goal of international recognition should be granted. As an equal with other nations, Somaliland will be able to contribute even more effectively to a sustainable and prosperous future to the Horn of Africa, building in our own experience in foregoing an oasis of stability and rural tribal region. The road ahead may be long, but I'm sure and confident that even that Somaliland will be able to count on us, that will be able to count on US support as we pursue shared objectives and journey toward our long deferred destination is a free, sovereign and democratic so, Maryland Country, thank you very much for your attention. Okay. Well, Your Excellency, thank you very much for those comments and uh, for joining us here today. It really is a, a privilege and an honor to, to have you. Um, uh, just a few questions uh, for me. Um, I'll have to I'll have to choose wisely among this this long list that I have, but uh, okay. we don't have time for all of them. But um, you you mentioned China briefly uh, in your remarks, and of course, uh, Dr. Roberts mentioned China as well. Um, there have been rumors about Chinese delegations visiting Hargeisa. Um, can you give us any insight into those conversations and? Um, what Beijing is, is yes. saying to you? As you know, the Horn of Africa region today, all this, the superpowers or the developing, developing countries or the G7 countries, they are competing on the Horn of Africa. And every government, China, USA, UK, Soviet Union, every government is trying to get the influence of a nation in that region for their national interests. So China is one of these countries who are always competing, especially with the United States on the Horn of Africa. So yes, the delegation has come to Somaliland, and we discuss our interests and their interests. But most of the time, now we have, you know, different opinions, conflict. Because the issue of Taiwan, the Chinese are very upset that Somaliland has made relations, economic relations, and opened a trade office representative from Taiwan in our capital. But Somaliland is an independent country. We are not economically strong. We are not militarily strong. We are poor, but we are very proud. And we do our decisions by our own. 
No one can influence us. Thank you, uh, thank you for that. Um, uh, you mentioned uh, how proud Somaliland is and yes. independent, and that's clear uh, if you study Somaliland's history at all. One of the things that strikes me, and one of the reasons I believe that the United States should recognize Somaliland is that I don't see any future where Somaliland willingly rejoins or joins southern Somalia. Um, do you agree with that? Do you, do you see any scenario where Somaliland would willingly um, join with southern Somalia? I am not clear the decisions of the United States of America about Somaliland. But I hope and our people are expecting to have a close engagement with the US, United States of America because we share certain values. First, we share the history. So Maryland was a British colony. And USA was a British colony. The Americans, <laughs> the Americans fought for their independence. The same way Somaliland fought for its independence. We have the same culture, the language, and most of behavior based on UK culture. Second, Somaliland and Somalia will not joy and will not be again, will not share a union for the foreseeable future. Why? Our mentalities are different. Somali, those who are in Mogadishu since 1960 and today, 30 years we were in union. That 30 years was very difficult, both of us. There was infighting inside the country. Rejection of the Constitution, 1960. Unsuccessful coup in 1961. Those in Mogadishu, they believe it, and they believe today, and it is in their mindset that Somaliland is a small region of Somalia. They neglect the history that we were two independent countries. That joined it voluntarily. But most of the people in Mogadishu, they don't believe that. So why? In 1991, Somali Republic failed. It was a government comprised, composed of two different states, united voluntarily. But the United International Community, the US was a leading. In 2003, they recognized part of the union as an independent. So why do they recognize Somaliland? Why do they accept? Because most of the international community, the European countries, EU, and the Americans, who are the leaders of democracy in this globe, are supporting Mogadishu, which is basically the whole Shabab terrorist and failed leaders to their people, to protect their people. So why do they? And why do, we, why do we accept to be part of them? Since they are not ag agreeing that we were equal, two states who joined together. And now we have been succeeded. Each one on this way only. 30 years in union, 33 years without union. So, no way Somalia will accept to have a union with Somalia. I, I thought you might say that. Um, <laughs> then why are you asking me? <laughs> <laughs> I, th I thought the people should hear what your answer would be. You, uh, you gave it very well indeed. Uh, you mentioned the African Union. Um, why do you think the AU has taken the position that it has on Somaliland? Especially, they've sent 
fact-finding missions themselves and have recognized the uniqueness of Somaliland's case. Why do you think there hasn't been any action at the African Union on Somaliland? Very simple. The problem of Africa as a whole is the problem of colonization. Some leaders of Europe at that time, they were in Berlin, so they took a pencil and they put on the map of Africa. They never considered the ethnicity, the culture, the governments or the kingdoms who were there in, that, in Africa. So simply they divided that pencil. So they created a problem which will take for a long time. A mother is here, her son is the other side of the boundary, a husband is here, his wife is the other side of the boundary. And that problem has the whole of Africa. So the African governments in 1963 in Cairo, they accepted, yes, we cannot solve this problem nowadays. So let the boundaries be as if they were from the colonization. So that's why Africa is still in a confusion. See Congo. Every other country. A lot of nations, different languages, different countries, different governments, kingdoms, slumbered together by a pencil line. So African leaders, wherever they are, they are afraid that if they accept Somalia, there may be other countries who will follow that way. But they are wrong. And their commission stated that Somaliland is not a country which is succeeding from another country. Somaliland is within that chapter of OAU. The boundaries should be the, uh, the colonial boundaries. Somaliland is the colonial boundaries. They see that. But some of them are manipulating that. We are afraid of that because there is a crisis in every country. Kenya, maybe eight nations, not the language. Ethiopia, Nigeria, Congo, and so forth. But the Commission, 2005, the African Union sent to Somalia, Targeza, they concluded their report. The recognition Somalia is seeking historically and politically is justifiable. That was the conclusion of the, so we need the support of the international community to fulfill that, uh, that report, of the African Union. That's why we came here, to tell the UN. Yeah, um, I'm not sure the AU listens to the United States much, but uh, <laughs> perhaps no. we can put in if, a word. If the United States government, just not to talk, just if they look at Somalia, the Africans will come together to so obviously, uh, Ukraine is on many people's minds. Uh, you referenced Ukraine and uh, the, the, the awfulness of, of the Russian invasion. Um, one argument that I've seen made is that the Russian invasion of Ukraine shows that Somaliland should remain part of Somalia because you don't want to... Um, violate borders. Uh, I personally disagree with that, uh, that argument, uh, and I assume you do as well. Can you explain to us why the Ukraine situation is different from the Somaliland situation? It's, I think it's clear. Historical, <coughs> the Ukraine was a part of the Soviet Union. Then, when the Soviet Union collapsed, well, maybe 33, 25 or 20, 33 countries, they have got their independence, just like colonials from the African country. So Ukraine is an independent country since 1991, with its borders. But they have a cultural relation with the Soviet Union, the language, the culture, the heritage, they share it. And they are close neighbors. But they are an independent country. Why Russia is invading Ukraine, I don't know. You know me better. The Americans and Europeans are opposing that. 
the Russians are invading, they are poor side or no? Let us be there. I will not go to that. But we are different from that. It's a clear. We were two different states. We have been recognized by 26 countries, including the United States of America. Then we voluntarily united. And now we are, each one is going on its way, or it's failing. So I think we are different, Ukraine and so on. But we share the anguish, the death, the refugee, the bombardment. We share all this. And we are well experienced. We were the first witness, most of us. So we feel it, and we are very sorry about it. And we know support it to bombard cities, women, children. That's not a war, that's a massacre. It's a human, anti humanitarian. So we don't accept that, and we will never support it. But politically, we are different. But we share with the people of Ukraine the suffering that we have experienced. And still, we are suffering for 33 years. We share that agony together. But politically, we are different. I hope you know it well. <laughs> um, every democracy and country has its, its problems and its challenges. Um, what would you identify as the most pressing challenge or problem that Somaliland has today with both its democracy, but also more generally? The challenge we have, the democracy is first, Somaliland has no industry. Our resources are very meager. So a poor people to fulfill democracy is very difficult. When the person has no water to drink, no food, no shelf, most of youth are employed, over 70% of our people are unemployed. And for the last 30 years, we have, we have made eight elections, three presidential elections, transfer of power of the president peacefully, just imitating the rich countries like UK, United States, who established it 300, 400 years ago. Just imitated them. But we have a difficulty. And no progress in our economy. No progress in our recognition. No progress of the countries who are persuading us that democracy is the only viable government that can bring progress to the people. And still, no touch results from our elections. So you can, you can guess the challenge. Why a guy, a boy or a girl, of, started to vote when she was 18? Three consecutive presidential elections, 15 years. Now she's 33, she's 33, married with his children, unemployed, have no good school for his children, has no health care. Why does he support democracy? Guess that. Just because the United Kingdom, the American, the progressive people have tried it. Let's go that path. It's a challenge to us. They need to support those who share our values. So to understand and to get product from the elections and democracy. So we have a the challenge we have is the poverty, number one. Security. All our Horn of Africa, most of the countries are unstable. There are terrorists. Shabab, ICS, in Mogadishu, and the northern regions of Somalia. So all our efforts, all our migrant resources, is under the category of what we call security departments. 33% of our budget is allocated for the security departments, just to defend a shabab and ICS from the country. So, yes, democracy, we believe it. Our youth believe it. We have been socialists for the last 30 years. We saw what it is. We're friends of the Soviet Union. I was trained in Soviet Union. 
This guy is from Odessa, four years. So we have tasted what socialism is, what communism is. We refused it, we rejected it. So we took the path of democracy. Social, what called free media, free market also. <coughs> but we need the production of democracy. Our people, they need it. Not rhetoric, democracy, the best way, but we need the product. And we will get that the support of the U.S. people, not the government. U.S. people to understand that, to support and cooperate with the people who share them with their values, humanitarian, free market, free media, and democracy. So we are struggling with it, how to promote it. Well, you certainly know your audience um, singing the praises of democracy and, uh, yeah. and uh, criticizing socialism. Yeah, this is a fact, um, <laughs> The uh, final question, we're already running out of time here, unfortunately, but what are you most proud of? Um, Somaliland has a lot to, uh, to be proud of. Uh, we've already discussed a number of those things. If you had to choose one element of Somaliland's experience, what would you say this makes me most proud? I am proud of the Somaliland people, how they are resilient. They are the only one, maybe in Africa or in East Africa, that their government has collapsed. And no one can imagine when the government collapses. All of a sudden, think you are in Washington, there is no police station, there is no bank, there is no electricity, the chair is, there is no chair to put the criminals. How do you think that? We started from there. Even without water in our, in our cities. Our people, they came back from the camps, refugee camps from Ethiopia. Thousands and thousands of dollars. And they came their homes, destructed by air and bombardment of the tanks. Their people, their sons, their old maybe fathers are still they are buried death in the houses, not buried for two years. They started from there. First, to make peace, to build institutions for their security, to rebuild the station priests, to fetch for water the people, to start schooling, education, under the tree. There is one of our relegates who was there under the tree for his first 10 years. He is with us. From there, we started to build a government institutions with a very meager, meager help from NGOs. No government in the globe have helped us. And you know, we are very poor people. We have no industry. We have no oil. We have, we have an oil and diamond, but we have not still explored it. So our people are very resilient. There are people who can survive with every situation and their belief they can do it. They can do a government. And we made a government. The most democratic, the most peaceful in the, uh, in the Horn of Africa. We built it for 33 years. And I'm very proud of our people. Men and women. Well, um, yeah, you, you should be proud. It's, it's one of the things that I so admire about Somaliland is, is what they've created uh, from extraordinarily difficult circumstances. Uh, we're out of time, unfortunately, but um, Your Excellency, uh, we're, we're so grateful that you came here uh, to talk with us. Um, we look forward, hopefully, to hosting you again in, in the future. Uh, please think of us as friends, um, and we'll certainly be doing what we can to um, uh, make American policy a little more rational uh, and um, a little more beneficial for both our, our countries uh, with regards to Somaliland. So thank you again. Thank you. It's a, it's a great pleasure to me to be in Washington again. I live there. I think you were not born at that time. <laughs> 1981 to 83, I was in the Embassy of Somalia in Watergate office.
for three years in Washington. I lived two years in Virginia. Poor Lee. Military Academy. And I was about eight months in Colombia. Dayton was brought air base to be trained as a procurement officer who will deal with. I was one of the first delegation of Somali military officers to enter the Pentagon, 1983. First delegation. The Vice Minister, uh, uh, the Minister of Defense at that time for Mogadishu. So it's a great, great pleasure to be back in Washington, in America, to see how they change it, the progress you made, but still the Capitol Hill and the Mall are the same as they were. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again, Your Excellency. Yeah. It's time for me to be there, one week to go. I have no time to go around to my school in Fort Lee or Ohio Dayton or to my house in Duke Street. My good friend, my good friend, the restaurant, who helped me at that time. I have no time to go around there. But it's a great, a great pleasure to be back here again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.